Hello, welcome. My name is Pam Bakke. I'm manager of Community Youth Development and Adult Resident Services for Cherokee Nation. And I'm here to, sh to show you some instructions on make and take crafts. The first thing we're going to do will be a corn bead necklace. I want to give you a little bit of history on the corn bead. Corn beads um, grow on a plant that the stalk actually looks like a corn plant. That's why they're called corn beads. But the bead itself is actually the seed of the plant. And the, the stem goes right through the middle of the seed. So when you pull the stem out, it leaves a hole, natural hole for beading. Works great. Um, the reason we call them corn beads, some, of them, some people call them trail of tear beads also. Um, the legend is behind it that when all the Cherokees were gathered up from North Carolina and brought on the trail of tears, that as the Cherokees cried on the trail, everywhere a Cherokee tear fell, a corn bead plant grew up. And so we use the corn bead in our necklaces and things as a symbol to remind us how much the Creator loves us, that we come from a strong people, and that the Creator is always there for us. Okay, first thing you're going to need to do is your sinew. And if I can find the end of this one, then that's always the hardest part, part of that. And I thought, there it is. I always just roll out whatever goes between my two hands stretched out and clip it off. And now most sinew, that one split right away when I cut it. But most sinew will split into three to five pieces. And it works better if you split it now. That way it goes through the needle easier. And it also doesn't clog up your beads. Thread your needle. Which to me, this is another hard part. I have to take my glasses off to see. I use a size 10 sharp because that goes through the corn beads easier and through the size 6 seed beads. We'll use size 6 seed beads. I will just take and put a little handful of each in my little things. They're easier to handle than my big containers are when I'm beading. We will start by taking one size 6 bead, put it on the needle. I take it about 6 inches from the other end and just tie a knot around the bead. Don't tie a double knot because knot, we're going to take it off when we finish off later. But four to six inches, you can always slide it up later. Then we're going to put the corn beads on. Corn beads come in a string. Um, I get mine through Fire Mountain Gems. Through Fire Mountain Gems, they're called Job's Tears. Uh, you can also get them from Light Eyes. In the bulk I buy them, it's easier for me to get what I need from uh, Fire Mountain Gems. When they come on this string, the, seed, the corn bead is actually the seed, and it grows with the stalk through the middle of the seed here. And sometimes you have some of the plant matter still in there. If you have plant matter still in there, if you take a pair of needles pliers, you can just pull it right out. And it makes the hole easier to use, and I just spilled beads. But, so when I start mine, after I tie the bead on, I put one corn bead on. And then I put my pattern of 17 beads. You can pick any pattern you'd like. I'm OCD, so everything has to be symmetrical. So I do two of one color. I'm using purple, black, and white because I'm hoping that will be enough of a contrast for you to be able to see it better. I put two of color one, color two of color two, two of color three. Then you go back one color one, or in my case, one purple, one black, one white, sorry, one black. Then I'm going to go back to the white and purple because this is going to make it backwards now. Then I'll do two black, two white, and two purple. This is one full set. To do a good size necklace, I do 14 sets. That way it's long enough for the person who has the biggest, a bigger head for it to go over. It hangs down. It's not choking me. So then you just go through, put another corn bead on, and do another set. And you do this for 14 sets. If something happens, you start with the seed beads instead of the corn beads. It's no big deal. As long as you do 14 full sets. Hold it up there. Let's see one, one set. This right here is one full set. And it doesn't matter if you, st whichever one you start with, you want to finish with the other. So if you start with the corn bead, you want to end up finishing up with seed beads. If you start with seed beads, you finish with the corn bead. To save time where I can show you more things, I will show you. I have one here that I've got all 14 sets on. I finished with the seed beads. Now I'm going to, to tie it off, I'm going to go back and untie 
the seed bead. I'm going to slide them up just a little bit so I have more room to work right here. But I'm going to untie this sinew from around this seed bead just that we started with. And it will just go back. It doesn't, so it doesn't matter what color you put on when you put your stop bead on. It's called a stop bead. Sometimes you can get stop springs at the bead store. Most places I've found charge a dollar a piece. It's just a little spring you clip on there. And then take the two ends. You're going to tie it in a knot. The first time you go around it, if you will wrap one string around there twice and pull it tight, that's supposed to keep it from slipping as bad. Then you tie a second knot. And because I don't like to have to do it over, I tie a third knot just to make sure it doesn't slip. Because sometimes your sinew will slip just a little bit. Then I like to take mine and take the needle and go one way, either way, in either direction, back through several of your beads. And try not to get your necklace all caught up in it like I just did. End up looping around itself. All right. I usually try to go through one full set of beads or at least a half a set. I do this because then where you where the beads are inside that it's less likely to slip. And then when I trim off my strings, it's harder for someone to find where my knot is. But after I trim that side off, I will go back and put the other end through the needle. And I'll go back through a few, a few beads on the other side of the necklace also. And I started that way, so this time I'll go the other way. And I just go through a few beads and then we're trim it off and you have your furniture and it doesn't have a clasp because it's long enough it can just go over your neck to wear and that's it okay I want to give you a little history on the corn hostel but I also want to let you know that each person will be receiving the stuff that all the supplies and the patterns instructions they need to make each of these crafts. Uh, the cornhouse dolls, we use material now to make their clothes. I'm sure before white contact, we just used corn husk and maybe a pieces of leather, scrap pieces of leather. And, um, but the cornhouse doll does not have a face. The story that was told to me about why the cornhouse doll does not have a face is the first woman was named Selu. And Selu walked around, she asked, she, she, she helped people and she asked the creator if she could make some dolls for the for the for the girls little girls to play with and the creator told her she could so she made cornhouse dolls and when she made the cornhouse dolls one of them was so beautiful she was walking around with the little girl they were supposed to help the little girls give them something to do give them a playmate and they helped the people out well when she walked around she saw her reflection in a pond or a creek one day when she saw her reflection in the water she realized how beautiful she was and this cornhouse doll got to the point that she was so vain that she didn't want to help people. She didn't want to play with the little girls anymore. All she wanted to do was sit and look at herself in the water. And this made the creator sad. And it made Selu sad. So the creator took away her face so that she would not be vain anymore and that she would go back to serving the people. So this is why we make the cornhouse doll without a face, is to remind us not to be vain. And the creator put us all here to help each other. To make the cornhouse doll, you're going to use tamale wrappers is what, where I buy them. Where I buy them in this store, they call them tamale wrappers. Uh, it's dried corn husk uh, within the Hispanic section. So that for these, you want to soak them in water. The warmer the water, the faster it soaks up and the softer the corn husk will be. Um, but it doesn't have to be really warm. I use yarn to tie it with. You're going to expect to get wet. Expect to get your surface area where you're working wet. I did put paper towels on top of the tablecloth to try to save it a little bit, but I cut several, like eight to 10 inch strings 
and two long, maybe 18 inch long strings um, to tie it up with. Um, we use, for clothing, we, we'll, I'll cut a scarf, an apron, and a shawl. We just use a calico, soft print, light colored material, whatever you have. I use a lot of scraps I have around the house, stuff that somebody just gave me, left over from quilting or whatever. Or you can just go buy a piece of material. But to start with, you will need about, I'm going to say about 14 corn husks to make one. And let them soak just a few minutes. They might already really soft and droopy. And so to start with, you're going to take three corn husks. So I got some little bitty ones in here too. The first three doesn't matter how huge and long they are. They can be shorter. Um, but the first three is going to cover her head. So you're going to take the corn husk that you don't rip. And you're going to start about an inch from the top, from the narrow in here and you're gonna like kind of gather it like fan fold it between your thumb and your forefinger then you'll take the second one right beside it and a third one right beside that I'm gonna take one of my short strings wrap it around there a couple of times for strings you can use yarn you can use sinew um, I like to use yarn because sinew slips especially when it's wet tie a double knot and trim the string off now, I'm going to take my doll head, just a one inch styrofoam ball, one and a half inch maybe, depending on what size you want. I take the end of my scissors and I'm going to drill a hole just, a, just about half to two thirds of the way up in there. Not everybody does this. I do this because then that's where I put the corn husks that are above that string. This is going to be the top of her head. So now you're going to take the corn husk. And you're going to fan them out where they overlap just a little. But you want them to totally cover. This one's folded. You want them to totally cover the styrofoam ball. So there's no styrofoam ball showing. And this is why I like to drill the hole on the top of the head. Because that way all that's in there. If not, it sometimes ends up with looks like it has a little knot on top of her head. You're going to take another string. Wrap it around the neck twice. As tight as you can tie it. In a double knot again. And this is going to be her head. Trim the strings off on it. Lay it over to the side for just a minute. Then you're going to get one more corn husk. And I like to take my corn husk and fold the narrow end down just a couple of inches. Then I kind of Fold about a third of it down, and I'm going to start rolling it. You want to roll it tight, as tight as you can roll it, kind of like you're rolling up a cigar. Or Then you're going to take a string after you get it rolled up. I'm going to take a longer one. Wrap it around the end, about a half inch or so from the end. Wrap it around a couple of times. Tie it in a couple of knots. Trim the strings. This is her arms is what I'm making. Then you're going to do that with this other end. I just kind of tighten it back up. This is one of the reasons I fold that end down because if you don't, one end is going to be a little bigger than the other one anyway, but if you don't fold that down, the other end is going to be a whole lot bigger than the other one. Tie a couple of knots again. So that's what her arms are going to look like. Then you're going to take this part with her head and you're going to divide the corn husk in half. If you have to, you can split one. It doesn't matter. You're going to take your arms and fold it, put it up in there in the middle. That's close up to the head. Wiggle them over to the middle. Tie another string around her body. Below her arms. Tight as you can tie it. Double knot. And trim your strings again. Now, lay her to the side for just a moment. You're going to take one of the long strings that we did. Lay it across in front of you. This time, you're going to need three nice corn husks. You're going to put... 
one in the middle. And then you're going to put two more. You're going to overlap it halfway on that first one. Put the other one right beside it where the overlap is on that first corn husk. And I do this about inch and a half, maybe two inches down from there. Then we're going to take the corn husk doll body and you're going to lay her where the string just below her arms is even with the string on the skirt. But her head is going to be facing you. She's upside down right now. You're going to lay her there. Then you need three more corn husks. And you're going to start with the laying the two side by side. I think this one, yeah, got two of them there. Let's get some nice ones. You'll do the two that's going to lay side by side. You're going to cover up. Don't worry, we'll flip her later so she's just supposed to be covered. You lay the two there side by side first and pick a nice looking one. I don't want one that's split. And you're going to lay it right in the middle where it covers the, where those two overlap. Again, you're like an inch and a half, two inches down from the string. You're going to gather these up with your fingers and you're going to pull the string up around her waist. And again, you're going to tie it in a double knot as tight as you can get it. And then this one, I like to, after I get that tied double, flip her over, wrap it around and tie again, because sometimes I can get a little tighter this second time. And then we'll trim her off. Then you're going to flip her over. Kind of like a banana, peeling a banana. You just, these are already falling down. I'm just going to pull them down like this. And you're going to kind of arrange them where they overlap just a little bit for her skirt. Now, I'm going to take her and this end, this is where you want to trim her off however long you want her to be. You can make a short lady, you can leave her taller, but you want to trim these off even. And it may take a couple of tries to get them pretty even, because what you're going to want when you get through is you're going to want her to stand up. Then, I like to take, and this is where I use, I use this paper towel that I just got all wet. And I roll it up and I stick it up under her dress just a little bit to keep her body puffed out. I just kind of slide it up in there. That's going to be the front of my lady, or the back, whichever way. Then you're going to take your other long one, and you're going to wrap it around her skirt about an inch from the bottom. You don't want to pull it in too tight because you want her skirt to fly out a little bit for her to stand up. And tie a double knot, and trim this one off. And then, this one you can either leave on permanently, or once it's dried, you can take it off. You need to leave it on until it dries because if you take it off, as the corn has to dry, they try to straighten up so her skirt's going to flip up. And you're going to have a Marilyn Monroe doll. Mm -hmm. Then, I like to take and finish the top of her off. I take a narrow corn husk, rip it in half, put one across diagonally over her shoulder and diagonally over the other side. Do the other one the other shoulder, tie one more string around her waist, just to hold these on. This looks kind of like apron straps on her. And tie it in a double knot. And if you think these ends stick out too much, you can trim them off. But mainly, we're going to dress our doll now so the dress, the, the apron will help hold those down. Um, I take the scarf that I've cut out of my material. I have a pattern for a scarf, a shawl, and an apron. And I'm going to put it over her head like this, around her head. Tie a knot in the back. And I tie it loosely to start with because then I want to be able to adjust this. And I take the back corner of this 
little scarf and tuck it under that knot to where she looks like she has a little head scarf on. And you can even tuck it in with your fingers as you want and tie it in and then go back and tie a second knot to hold it on. So she has her scarf. And you gotta be able to get a hold of the other end of it when you get it right there. There. See, so she has a little scarf on her head. Then I take her little apron and I realized it was stuck in half. I didn't realize I forgot to cut that edge. Take the apron, lay it on top of her dress, and you're going to want to tie it around her waist. Then I take her shawl. You don't have to make the shawl unless you just want to. I like the shawl. I take the shawl and fold it in half or thirds, usually in thirds, lengthwise. Then I'm going to take this little shawl and I kind of tuck it under her arms, wrap it over her shoulders, and tuck it under her arms on the other side where she's wearing her shawl. Or you can take it over, tap it up over her arm. And there is your cornhouse doll. Okay, now we're going to talk about making clay pinch pots, clay beads, and medallions. Um, you can get two different types of clay. There is clay that is considered to be air dry clay which is not made to be fired. The only problem with the air dry clay is it is not waterproof. So you can't make it for containers you're gonna hold water in. You can't, if you make the beads out of it, don't wear them in the water. Uh, we had a group of kids one year that we did a camp with and they went floating and I told them, don't wear your necklaces. Some of them did it anyway. And then they came out, all they had left on their necklaces were seed beads, all the other clay beads melted. But you wanna cut your clay with a clay cutter. Um, you can buy these online. It's just a piece of wire between two pegs. I also, before I bought one online, my husband made me one using a, my son's guitar strings and two pieces of dowel rod. And, but you start with a clump of clay. And to make a piece of pottery, I want to, this is really good in soft clay. It, that's very good to work with. You want to take it and you're going to thump it down on a hard surface a few times. What this does is this helps the air bubbles move out and it also helps soften the clay up. This clay is pretty soft. So once you get it thumped, the air, what you feel like, I do it 30, 40 times usually. Maybe not so much if it's, if I just got the clay out and it's real fresh. Roll it into a ball. When you're rolling it into a ball, you can roll it on the table. You can roll it between your hands. Rolling between your hands is best. Heat from your hand also helps soften the clay. When you're rolling it, if it starts to roll and look like a spaceship, you're pushing down too hard. So just push lighter and it'll come into a ball. To make the pinch pot, you want to start with the ball. Then you're going to take your thumb. Hold the ball in, your hand, in the palm of your hand. Take your thumb and push it down slightly. I turn it as I push my thumb in. You don't want to go too hard. You can kind of feel. You don't want to go all the way at the bottom. But when you've got your hole in there, I usually take my thumb and I'll crook it just a little bit and pull it and hold the clay like this around it and turn it. And that kind of stretches out the sides a little bit. But it's also called a pinch pot because you take your finger and your thumb and you pinch out the sides of it. This thins out the walls, makes the pot bigger. You don't want to punch it all the time from the very top. If you start from the very top, it will flare out and it's very difficult to get it to bring back in. It's much easier to pull it out than it is to bring it in. You can also, if it starts to crack like this, tip your, dip your finger barely in the water 
and smooth it out. You don't want to add too much water because water also softens the clay. If you get it too soft, it will not hold its shape. It will collapse on you. I have had people who have thought, oh, more water will be better. More water is not always better. But when you get your basic shape out, I'm not going to... You can pinch it back down if you need to and shape it all out like you want it. You can even take a piece of river cane or rod. You can take a river rock, a smooth pebble, like a glass pebble or the little rocks like you get to put in the bottom of a terrarium or something and you can smooth out with it. I found most times my fingers work better than anything else on, or, or the rock better on smoothing out the outside of it. Once you get it all smoothed out like you want it, you can do several different things with it. You can draw on it. I like to use the pointed tip of a bamboo skewer and just draw shapes on it. You can draw a sun. You can draw mountains. You can draw anything you want to draw on it. I always instruct my youth and my adults, turn it over on the bottom. Use the bamboo skewer. Put your initials and the year. I always tell my kids, the kids that come to my crafts, we do that because when you get, your mother's going to want to remember when you made it because she's going to put it up and keep it. It does not matter what it looks like. And then when you get to be an adult or a teenager and you have a girlfriend, she's going to bring it out and embarrass you to death if you're with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You can draw on them. You can do shapes on them. I have some dowel rods that I sanded the end flat, just cut a piece of dowel rod to make a line with because I can take this now and make diamonds. I can make zigzags. I can draw straighter lines with it because I can't draw a straight line to save my life. You can take the round end of the dowel rod of the bamboo square to make dots. You can use a piece of river cane and the piece of river cane. You kind of want to, when you're going to use things that you're going to push into it, you want to put your finger on the inside of the pot. I, ha I even have some little stamps I bought. They're little leather stamps. Put your fingers on the inside of it, hold it there so it doesn't stamp all the way through, and push it in. You decorate it however you want. This is one of the air dry pots. It will take this two or three days to totally dry. Once your pot is dry, totally dry, you can actually paint it with acrylic paint if you want to. You can spray it with acrylic sealer to make it shiny if you would like. Just don't put water in it. And you can make small pots, you can make bigger pots. We have some here. We have some larger stamps that kids use and things. You can draw on them. Same principle. Use the same clay. Take your clay. I like to make my own, to make my own medallions to put on a necklace or whatever. I may roll it into a small ball and then flatten it out. Write on it, stamp on it, draw on it. You can shape it. I shaped this one kind of like a turtle shell and drew turtle shells on the back of it. You can make them small. You can make them big. You can make a wall hanging. Take a chunk of this, roll it out. I use anything I can find around to make. I've made use dowel rods flatten, use bamboo skewers to make holes. Sometimes for beads and stuff, I'll use a paper clip stretched out. Took a piece of big dowel rod, rolled it out. Makes a great roller to roll your clay out flat. You can draw on it to make a hole in it to hang on a necklace or hang on a wall. I take the pointed end of a bamboo skewer, twist it as I go through. And from the other side, I'll do that again. Use a drop of water and just kind of smooth out around the edges to kind of hide the edges of it. Draw on it, decorate it however you want. Let it dry. You can hang that in the middle of your necklace. Draw whatever you want on it. Some of them, see, I've used the little, I used the band, the dowel rod and made zigzags on that one and dots to make it look like an ornament. Uh, this one I wrote on it with uh, a bamboo skewer. This I drew on a bamboo skewer. This is a stamp I made myself. And you can just, anything you want to put on them, you can put on them. You can make them big, hang on the wall, you can make them little. I made a pretty good size one for my son and daughter-in-law for their wedding. And then my daughter, they got in a fight and my daughter-in-law knocked off one broken pieces. <laughs> If you want to make beads though, I have some here that I've made. These are dried, but they're not polished or anything. Once they're totally dry, I will take them, string them on a piece of fishing line, 
spraying with clear acrylic sealer, which will make them shiny. Then I will put them on a string. I don't know what I did with it. I have to straighten them. Put it on a string, put seed beads in between. You can put three or four seed beads in between them. You can put 17 like we did the corn bead necklace. However many seed beads, whatever colors you want in between them. You can do just clay beads. Only thing is if, to remember, the more clay beads, the heavier it's going to be. Also remember, the bigger your clay beads, the heavier it's going to be. I like to make mine, you know, pea size, maybe large pea size, small pea size. But to make a bead, you're just going to pinch between your thumb and your finger. Pinch off a little bit. Take and roll it in your hand till you get it round. Then this is where I use the bent, straightened out paper clip. I take the straightened out paper clip, twist it, push it through it one way, push it back through the other way, and then I'll even roll it on my finger here just a little bit to make that hole a little bigger. Because you want this hole to stay big enough for a needle to go through it, and when they dry, they're going to shrink just a little bit. Some instructions that you get will tell you to put this on a piece of uh, basket reed and leave it on there while it dries. I tried that once and some of mine broke when I tried to get them off because they kind of stuck to the reed. But just if you want to make different sizes of beads, pinch off with a different finger. You'll get a little more or a little less. You make the, however many beads you want. Let them dry. I always make a few extra because it never fails. I'll drop some. Have some break maybe some of them that the needles that the hole will close up on me and but there is another kind of clay too that has to be fired um we can buy it here at the heritage center um it has to be fired i'm thinking they told me to cone six if you fire it in a kiln um the reason i don't use that with the kids is we have such a hard time we only go out to see the kids once a month so we don't have any place to keep all their stuff separate so we can take it somewhere get it fired and take it back to them so we use the air drying and let them just take it home that day. But you make the beads. You can also, the, the, the clay that is supposed to be dry, fired in a kiln, you can dry it, you can fire it in an oven, put it on, put a, take a cookie sheet or something, put a piece of aluminum foil on it. Don't put the clay straight on the cookie sheet because most of your clay has lead in it and the lead will seep into your cookie sheet and then you don't want to use it for cookies. But if you put a piece of aluminum foil on there, that'll shield it. You can put it on there. You can put it in a ceramic dish. It won't seep into the ceramic or a glass. Put it in your oven at 200 degrees for about two to three hours. It's still not going to be waterproof, though. Waterproof, you have to get clay up to like 1,600 degrees. They can be fired outside in a kiln, in a, in a, in a wood fire. I do a lot of mine. They're still not waterproof because I don't get them quite hot enough. But I do a lot of mine on a, on a, in an old cake pan that I bought at a garage sale. I don't use it for cakes. I put my beads in it, build the fire in my charcoaler, and stick the pan right in the coals. And I like to use different kinds of wood. We'll make different colors, different colors on it. If I use my maple wood out of my scraps out of my front yard, it turns out the terracotta, whatever color the clay was to start with, it turns out just a little bit lighter than this. If I put pecan or hickory wood in there, it turned the smoke will turn it really dark. You can also, if you don't want it to change, have the smoke color in it, you can put it in a can and seal it, put it in like a coffee can, an old metal coffee can, seal it over the piece of aluminum foil so the smoke doesn't get to it. But you can make just about anything out of clay. We let our kids make things out of it. They sculpt out of it. They make medallions. They make wall hangings. I had a little girl make a dice out of one one day. I had one make an eight ball out of one. It just depends. I had one girl sitting and make furniture out of it. And then I had another one made bowling pins and a bowling ball. So you just... It gives the kid, to me, clay is therapeutic. I love to play with it, and it calms me down. But I love to make beads. I like beaded necklaces. I like the pinch pots. I like, you can actually, too, when you're making your clay pinch pot, instead of leaving it rounded like this, you can take and kind of pull out the edges and flatten it more out like a turtle. And then you can take another piece I've given them the instructions to give you on this one, too, that you can make it. You take this part, and you make it look like a turtle shell. Take another piece. Roll it up. Shape it into a turtle head. 
You want to take your turtle head right back here at the back and kind of flatten the little place out on it. Take your bamboo skewer, scratch a few little lines there, scratch a few little lines on your on your short turtle shell, put a dot of water right there, and smooth it down on there. You'd repeat the same thing with four legs and a tail and draw your little turtle shell on it and you have a turtle. You make your imagination is your limit.